Greetings, ANS members. I'm so glad to gather with you at the first ever all virtual ANS annual meeting. Thank you everyone for attending so that we can conduct all of our ANS business tonight. Last year at this time, we were celebrating reaching our goal for the Nature for All campaign to restore Wood End Sanctuary. Not a single one of us would have predicted that a global pandemic would sweep ANS in a new direction by the spring of 2020, but sweep it did. Last March, ANS was on track to meet our ambitious strategic plan and budget goals. On February 28th, we hosted a record 300 people in person for our Taking Nature Black conference and reached more online. We enjoyed our highest enrollment in nature preschool and summer camp. We hit 90% capacity in our adult programs and had full nature travel rosters. We were on track to roll out systemic high school water quality studies in Montgomery County. We'd scored victory in our fight to keep a solar project out of precious forest land. And we helped lead the charge to win increased federal funding for Chesapeake Bay restoration. We were experiencing media coverage like never before. And our Climate and Conservation Task Force refreshed our advocacy priorities, elevating human health, access to nature, and climate change as top line advocacy goals talk about foresight. And then COVID-19 hit. We had to close everything. The offices, the shop, school programs, summer camp, weddings too. All of it. And then, due to heartbreaking violence and threats against people of color, our nation rose up in protest and in defense of racial and social justice. And while all this was happening, John James Audubon, the man, was exposed to be an owner of enslaved people and a white supremacist. Oh my, what a year. But the bright spot during this dark time is the ANS staff, who together with the board leaned in and did an amazing pivot so that we could keep delivering on our mission work under conditions that none of us had ever experienced before. Here are just some of the amazing things the ANS staff has accomplished since March hosted the most successful Birdathon ever, raising enough money to cover both our Birdathon fundraising goal and the fundraising target for Audubon After Dark. Thank you to all ANS members who supported this important fundraiser. You really made a huge difference. Moved all of ANS's conservation cafes to the online platform within just one week's time. Created an entire edition of the Naturalist Quarterly devoted to the social and environmental justice issues. Delivered high quality early childhood education via Zoom and YouTube to help stressed preschool families stay connected to nature. Created a brand new cohort of Northern Virginia environmental activists working to save green spaces and waterways in Fairfax City and beyond. Helped found a new coalition to stand up against Beltway expansion. Turned staff apartments into video studios so that we could continue to deliver our garbology lessons to kids in DC public schools. Persevered to get all Nature for All permits approved so that construction can finally begin on our stream restoration and wheelchair accessible nature trail. Reopened our shop first online for delivery, then for pickup, and then for in-person shopping. Created the new and wonderfully popular Naturalist Hour to keep adults in our region connected to nature on Zoom through presentations by diverse local naturalists. And our wonderful creative staff dug into all the rules and regulations and figured out how to toe the line and still host small adult classes and wedding gatherings at Wood End. And finally, we were even able to restart small, socially distanced summer camps because parents and children needed that time in nature more than ever before. So it's been a year like no other, but Audubon Naturalist Society has been around for 123 years. And you, our members, are a large part of the reason that ANS will survive and thrive during the pandemic. Thanks to your membership dues, your participation in our programs, your generous support during this crisis, 
and your wonderful words of encouragement. ANS is poised to emerge from behind these dark clouds stronger than ever. And I am prouder than ever to be part of ANS, and I know you are too. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alice Ewan, and I'm the ANS Treasurer. ANS started fiscal year 2020 with the successful completion of our Nature for All capital campaign and strong support from our wonderful members during our year-end fundraising in December. Halfway through our fiscal year, in March, we were on track to meet our $4 million operating budget goals, and we were looking forward to a strong summer camp and wedding event rental season. When COVID swept the nation, it also seriously impacted ANS finances. We had to cancel nature travel trips, close our shop and nature preschool, suspend school field trips to Woodend and Rust, and stop sending teachers into classrooms across the region. Limits on in-person gatherings led to the cancellation of most of our wedding rentals, our summer camps, and our Audubon After Dark fundraiser. In addition, several longtime foundation funders pivoted their support to other priorities and did not renew grant or sponsorship support. Because of revenue shortfalls caused by the pandemic, ANS closed fiscal year 2020, ending August 31st, with an estimated operating loss of over $800,000, our first loss in many years. This is so disappointing because we were on such a strong path towards success before the virus hit. But ANS has lasted for 123 years for good reason, and there's some positive news to share. We were able to obtain a payroll protection loan of more than $500,000, most of which should be forgiven in our current fiscal year. And you, our dedicated members and supporters, stepped up like never before to provide emergency support. You came through with our biggest birdathon ever, helping us raise more than $90,000. Donors open their hearts and their checkbooks in response to our emergency COVID fundraising appeal. And our summer fundraising campaign was our most successful in ANS history. Thanks to a matching challenge by ANS member and Rachel Carson biographer, Linda Lear, and our members who met that matching challenge and then some. With your help, we were able to keep all of our staff employed through the end of the fiscal year. If you'd like more details on ANS finances, please go to our annual report at anshome.org slash about. It may take several years for all of our revenue streams to return to normal, but ANS is well poised to be resilient thanks to seven years of board and staff discipline to build up robust financial operating and capital reserves. Those financial reserves are a strong rainy day fund. And now that our rainy day is here, our reserves will enable ANS to keep delivering on our mission, even in the face of decreased cash flow. And of course, our Nature for All projects have dedicated, restricted funding, so they will proceed full steam ahead. Finally, let me say to all of you how much ANS appreciates and depends upon the generous financial support you steadfastly provide year after year, and have continued to provide during these challenging times. Your financial support enables our talented staff to carry on our mission work in all corners of the DC region. Every dollar you contribute to ANS enables us to achieve our vision of creating a larger, more diverse community of people who treasure the natural world and work to preserve it. And that work is more important now than ever. When that year-end request for funding arrives in your mailbox this year, please continue to give generously on behalf of our board of directors, thank you for all of your support. Oh my friends, it's so good to see you. Even if it is on screen, I miss being together. I hope you are safe and well and finding time to recharge your batteries in nature. Well, fiscal year 2020 was like the first line of a tale of two cities. It was the best of times, it was the worst of times. 
I want to thank the ANS staff and board of directors for helping us move calmly through this crisis. And I want to thank you, our members, for your incredible support. Happily, my role today is to bring you up to date on what's ahead for Audubon Naturalist Society. The whole ANS staff looks forward to the day when we can gather again in annual meeting-sized groups where we can hug and laugh, share nature notes, and eat great food. But I think we all know, in our heart of hearts, that things will never quite go back to normal. Because we all know there's more change ahead. The outcome of the election on November 3rd will set the stage for our work, not just in the coming year, but for years ahead. And I am counting on all of you to vote, to vote in support of nature, to vote for a brighter future for our children and our grandchildren. Don't sit this one out. We also know that it will take time before people can gather together in large groups. And the truth is, for ANS, when groups are smaller, earned revenue is smaller too. But there's a reason we've been around for 123 years, and that's because ANS is good at planning for and adapting to change. I think of this as a time when we're keeping the kettle on simmer. We're doing all of our mission work for all of our audiences, albeit at smaller levels. But by being on Simmer, we'll be ready to go full steam ahead when we're allowed to do so. 2021 will be a year of doubling down on our Nature for All promises. While Woodend undergoes construction and restoration, ANS will broaden our outreach into communities across the region. A silver lining to the shutdown is the amazing speed at which ANS expanded the delivery and reach of our nature programming online. And virtual components of our programs will stay with us forever now. We already see how many more people we can reach in the online world. We anticipate spikes in attendance at our 2020 Naturally Latinos Conference and our 2021 Taking Nature Black Conference. And we've started to blend online programs with small group outdoor activities. That's a model that might well become ANS's new normal. The sad fact highlighted by the pandemic is that when generations of people live with poor air quality, no access to green space, heat islands, and tainted water supplies, they suffer disproportionate effects on their health. And that is tragically the case right here in our DC region, where people from communities of color are dying from COVID at disproportionate rates. ANS has an important role to play to support environmental justice in our region and campaigns that will ensure that everyone has safe access to healthy environments. And key to a healthy environment will be our work to combat, become more resilient to, and mitigate for climate change. Great news though, ANS advocacy is going gangbusters during the pandemic. We're teaching all those folks who are at home on their computers how to advocate to protect the environment. We've topped 4,000 ANS advocates this year alone. And we'll be patient because some things will take longer. We're listening carefully to our public school partners and what they need, and we will stand ready to find the perfect moment to deliver environmental education to all of our area's children who are learning online all the time. They need nature more than ever now. So this year, your support will ensure that ANS survives and thrives. Throughout the pandemic, nature has been there for us helping us restore our spirits, our minds, and our bodies. And we're going to need nature in the future as one of the few places we can turn to to de-stress in stressful times. Please give more generously than you ever have before so that ANS can continue its critical mission to help people enjoy, learn about, and protect nature. Last year at this time, we all cheered crossing the finish line of the Nature for All campaign. But that finish line was just the starting gate for me. My job is to bring all of the exciting Nature for All projects to life. And while it may have seemed quiet from the outside, 
Over the past year, I've worked really hard with ANS colleagues, engineers, landscape architects, and even lawyers in dogged pursuit of all of the permits that we needed to get these projects started. We've jumped through all of the hoops of the Maryland Department of the Environment, the Montgomery County Historic Preservation Commission, the Army Corps of Engineers, the Montgomery County Board of Appeals, the Maryland National Capital Park and Planning Commission, and the Montgomery County Department of Permitting Services. Whew. But finally, I'm happy to report that construction is underway for two centerpiece Nature for All projects, the restoration of our stream and the construction of a wheelchair accessible nature trail. Last month, on the first day of the project, a red-tailed hawk sat high above our outdoor meeting and called out its resounding approval. We've hired Stormwater Maintenance and Consulting to help us with this massive undertaking that will restore important habitats while making nature accessible for more people in our region. We expect the work to take at least 10 months to complete. The last and most important step will be the installation of thousands of native trees, shrubs, and understory plants in and around Woodend's forest stream and pond. This project will heal the scoured banks of Woodend stream with stone and log dams that will gently slow down stormwater through a series of small waterfalls. At the same time, the degraded nature trail will get regraded to meet wheelchair accessibility standards for outdoor spaces. It will be surfaced with gravel that is bonded with a special polymer, almost like making a Rice Krispie treat. This bonded gravel won't shift under wheelchair wheels, but the polymer allows stormwater to soak through the gravel into the earth below. What I'm most excited about is that for the first time ever, people of all abilities, including those who use wheelchairs, walkers, and strollers, will be able to access and enjoy all of Woodend's habitats, including meadows, forest, stream, and pond. I'm especially proud that as part of Nature for All, 24 of Woodend's forest acres will be placed under a permanent forest conservation easement. That means we've protected these precious forest acres inside the Beltway forever. We hope you'll visit Woodend to watch these exciting projects take shape. While you're here, you'll notice that the generous donations of our Nature for All donors are already making a visible difference at Woodend. At the Jones Mill Road entrance, beautiful banner signs welcome people of all backgrounds from all communities. And at the mansion, a new wheelchair accessible flagstone path is bordered by gorgeous new native plant beds. But that's not all. In the coming months, we will replace the asphalt in the two mansion parking areas with permeable pavers to take a big step toward our goal of treating 100% of wood end stormwater runoff. We'll also create new accessible paths around the mansion and add even more native plant gardens. While all of this is happening, we're doing that same behind the scenes permitting work for the next phase of Nature for All our delightful nature play space to encourage families, students, and teachers to learn and play in nature. I want to thank all of you, our generous members and supporters, for making Nature for All a reality. Our shared vision, your generosity, and lots of hard work will make our dreams for Wood End Nature Sanctuary come true. Our wall of honor has been installed at our main entrance to thank all the people who helped Nature for All take flight. Now more than ever, people need nature to recharge, reconnect, and tap into what really matters the most. ANS is committed to providing that connection through our Nature for All projects. And please remember that your support at year's end will allow us to develop and run the great programs that our Nature for All projects will make possible at Woodend. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Carolyn Pierce, and I'm the chair of the Governance and Nominating Committee for Audubon Naturalist Society. I'm glad to join so many active ANS members and supporters tonight. First, it's my honor to thank three outgoing ANS board members who have served Audubon Naturalist Society well during their tenures, and especially recently as we navigated through the pandemic. Greg Peterson has served on the board since 2018. Greg's service included countless hours as a water quality monitoring volunteer and enthusiastic team leader and teacher. His dedication to the Nature for All Capital Campaign leadership team helped ensure that we reached our ambitious campaign goal. And his service on the Climate and Conservation Task Force and Programs Committee has helped ANS live up to our bold strategic plan goals. And on a personal note, I want to thank Greg for finding that meadow lark for me for my 90th bird for our birdathon this spring. Thank you, Greg. Ryan Matney has served on the board since 2017. Ryan came to know ANS by sending his children to our nature preschool and then devoted his professional experience in nonprofit finances to ANS, first on the finance committee and then with the addition of board service. Ryan's employer, Howard Hughes Medical Institute, hosted our 2020 Taking Nature Black conference free of charge at their beautiful headquarters in February of 2020. And we're pleased to note that Ryan will continue to serve in the Finance Committee. Thank you, Ryan. Last, but certainly not least, we thank longtime ANS member Scott Fossler. Scott joined the Board of Directors in 2014 and stepped up to the President's seat from 2017 to 2019. It was during Scott's tenure as president that ANS launched and completed our Nature for All campaign. Scott played a leading role in helping ANS secure a $200,000 capital grant from Montgomery County for our Nature for All projects. In his spare time, Scott also chaired the Climate and Conservation Task Force that set new and important goals for ANS's ongoing conservation advocacy work in the future. Thank you, Scott. And now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you our newest slate of board candidates, the most diverse slate of candidates in ANS history. This incredible group of regional and national environmental leaders will help ANS achieve our mission and meet our strategic goals in the years ahead. Once you've heard about these candidates, I know you will join me in voting a resounding aye to elect these new members to the ANS Board of Directors. Rebecca Lamus Otero of Washington, D.C. is founder of City Blossoms. City Blossoms is a high-functioning, creative organization dedicated to healthy communities by providing children with innovative, community-engaging green spaces, such as gardens and play areas. Rebecca has more than 20 years of nonprofit design and management experience. She has been honored as an ANS environmental champion at our Naturally Latinos conference and has been a panel moderator for Naturally Latinos as well. Chance Lundy is co-owner and principal of Inspire Green, a firm that combines engineering and urban planning with community organizing. Inspire Green is dedicated to fulfilling a vision that facilitates the empowerment and transformation of every community through environmental planning. This community conscious engineer has partnered with ANS as a panelist at our Taking Nature Black conference, and Chance also lives in Washington, D.C. with her husband, Dwight Russell, and their rambunctious little boy, Amari. Shanita Rashid coordinates all communications for urban forestry programs at American Forests using a tree equity lens. Shanita has worked with local and national organizations such as the Alliance for the Chesapeake Bay and the Children's Environmental Health Network to lead strategic planning and training initiatives. She served as a consultant on the ANS IDEA Task Force and as a volunteer on ANS's Climate and Conservation Task Force. Alan Spears is the resident historian and senior director for cultural resources at the National Parks Conservation Association. 
Allen uses real life stories in a conversational style to connect audiences to the National Park Service's historic and cultural resources. Allen's recent victories include securing designation of the Harriet Tubman Underground Railroad Monument and the Birmingham Civil Rights National Monument. Allen was an original member of the ANS Wooden 2065 Council. He was also honored as an ANS Environmental Champion at the 2018 Taking Nature Black Conference. Allen now serves on the ANS Wooden 2065 Committee. Wilfred Quasey Wood hails from Freetown, Sierra Leone and lives in Prince George's County, Maryland. Willie is the Senior Conservation Specialist at the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District. Willie is in charge of the agricultural component of the Chesapeake Bay Preservation Program for Fairfax County. He represents the Soil and Water Conservation District on regional, state, and local level environmental committees. Willie is a member of ANS's Wood Inn 2065 Committee.